Coach, the, uh, the defense really uh, buckled down after the first possession, and Mario was talking about how in the first three games, uh, you know, other teams have had success on their first drive. What is it about that and, and adjusting from that because they really tightened up afterwards? Well, it, it's not so much adjustment-wise. We've not had anything in the first three games in the first three drives, uh, really, that we hadn't prepared for. Now, Southern Miss was a little bit different because they did so much wildcat almost exclusively. But we had prepared for that, so it's not like we're seeing things that I think the thing is just getting everybody settled down and, and just the routine and the confidence that they know their job, they understand their job, settle down and just play the next play. Uh, once we get through that, uh, it, it, you can tell it on the sideline. So it's not it's not anything that's catastrophic. It's not in, incurable. Uh, it's just we just got to work to it. Your biggest takeaways from the defensive secondary it seemed like DJ Ivy had a great game, and James is doing James Williams things. Right. Well, C Coach Adai has really put an emphasis and done a really good job of we're, we're a press team. We press a lot in, in coverage, and that's key because your feet have got to be, you know, you got to move your feet correctly, and then you got to you got to have off hand jam. You got to you got to get your hands on, them. and so we really made a lot of progress there. Uh, we were very tight in our coverage, uh, and, and which is good. And we were tight in our coverage without being too handsy because if you get tight in your coverage and you start grabbing things, then you don't have a problem. And so we, we, we really put a point of the emphasis on that. They did a good job, and I think it showed up in the game. Coach, I know they, they've been rotating for each other mostly this year, but Corey Flagg and uh, Kayla Johnson, do they have the skill set to play with each other, do you, do you feel like? Yeah, they could. The problem is they play the same position. So, right. so Max, and that's, you know, you got, when you build a house, you got plumbers, you got painters, you got drywallers, and, you know, you don't want your drywaller doing plumbing. So, <laughs> yeah. so your positions are that different, though? Uh, yes. Yes, they are. That'd be like tailback and quarterback. They're both backs. No, they're really not. Coach, do three games. Where do you think on the defense needs to see the most improvement going forward? Everything, everything. We, we, we will never come in, never come in. And, and our guys have bought in. It's something I learned a long time ago. Maybe when I first got into coaching, I thought, oh, yeah, if you win the national championship and everything's perfect. But we watched that game and realized we won the national championship and you know, we still had mental errors. We still had guys out of position. It, it, it never, because no play is ever the same. They line up the same formation, run the same route. But the guy's a little bit wide, a little bit tighter, the tackle set's a little bit deeper. It's, it's always, there's always something to improve. And it's a mindset that you understand that, you embrace that. Uh, so we've got things that we, we have to get better at tackling. We, we, we're tackling pretty well, but not good enough. And uh, so we're, you know, we've got to get better at, at the coverage things we talked about. Keep improving those. We've got to we got to up front make sure that we're low pad leverage, using hand striking, staying in our gap. It just never changes. I wish it went away, and I wish one day I could come in here and stand here and say, you know what, we played a perfect game. But I don't think that's going to happen. And then how would how would you evaluate Leonard Taylor's performance on Saturday? Well, Leonard keeps growing. He you know he's he's a young guy. Uh, it's a little different schematically, uh, and where the D line was nothing wrong. There's different. You know, Baskin Robbins made a lot of money selling different flavors, so you, know, you don't have to have one flavor. I'm not anybody being negative about anything, but they were more a penetrate and attack front, where we're more play blocks, and so that's you know when you're young, that's a, a process, uh, and so he's he's making a lot of improvement on it. He makes a lot of big plays, but he'll be the first to tell you, you know, he's because he's he's got an unbelievable ability. Sometimes Leonard made some of those plays, and I'd say this if he was in here, it's like, no, no, yes, yes, you know, uh, uh, because he's just so talented. But when he's, he's improving each week, and you can see it. Coach, Coach, Coach what do you make of the way that Daryl Jackson Jr. compliments Leonard Taylor and the way they play together? Well, there's two large human beings in there, and, uh, you know, that's, uh, it eats up space. And then when you eat up space with guys that are very talented, that are, have quick feet, got really good explosion, they're strong, uh, then they're just not a refrigerator sitting in there. I mean, they're, they've, got, you know, they've got a motor and, and they, can, they can move. So that, 
that obviously that complements and helps the whole defense when you when you can you know force people to run the edges. Coach, um, uh, Middle Tennessee State, what's the biggest challenge for you defensively? And also, I, I know someone asked about DJ Ivy. He's a veteran now. He had a good game. Any specifics on him? Right. Well, I'll start with DJ. DJ is number one, extremely coachable. Number one, for number two, is he's, he's, he's a very intelligent young man from, from the football standpoint and academically too, but obviously we're talking about football. You know, he's just a bright guy. And so he's got a lot of pride in his play and he's, he's really polished his technique. His technique has just improved. You know, it's one that practice is practice and we have to work to that level to improve things and work hard on it. But then when you get in the game, it's a, it's a, it's a little bit different. It is, and so uh, I, I think he's playing game speed more in the week now because he understands that because he's going to have to play it, play it in, in in the game. So rather than just you know going through practice, he's learned to really practice on his own while the play's going on. In practice, he's playing it like a game play. He's playing his technique, his speed, like a game. So if you're going against a scout team receiver who obviously may not be as fast as the guy or as quick as the guy you're going to play on Saturday. He didn't go out there and play to that level. He's practicing at a high level and it's showing up on Saturday. Uh, Middle Tennessee, uh, Rick, the head coach there, Stockstill and I are very, very close friends. I've uh, known him a long time. Uh, they, they uh, some people won't understand what I'm about to say here. I might say it because of that, but the offense the best for the older group of here is the how money true offense of the, you know, Kentucky, Valdosta State that became the Mike Leach air raid offense. Uh, it's a lot of four, four wides on the field, a lot, uh, majority of the time. Uh, they throw the ball to set up the run rather than the other way around. Uh, they do run it more than they used to in that offense, but it's still not a lot. Their bubble screens, their now screens, their edge screens are really part of their running game. Uh, they get that ball out of, the, out of their hand quick. Uh, you know, they, they release they release the back a lot. So it's five on five on your D line. It's not they don't keep tight ends in because they don't play with a tight end very often at all. Uh, they do do a little bit more of keeping. They've got a bigger wide receiver that'll move in like a tight end, but he's not a tight end. So you know, protection wise, uh, we've got an effective quarterback. That offense traditionally has been hard to get sacks against. Now you can affect the quarterback, but it's hard to get sacks against because it's built to get the ball out quick. Uh, so it's catch and throw, catch and throw, catch and throw. So, you know, we're gonna have to make sure that we affect the quarterback in, in some different ways. We've got to get our hands up. We got to make him throw through windows uh, that are tight, not, not doorways. Uh, and so that, that's key. And then we'll have to be tight in coverage and tackle well in space because they create a space game.